Go oh, deep, God. deep in the woods. Look, we found someone's bed. There we go, a dinosaur plant. This is actually where uh, Jeepers Creepers lives. There's holes in the crocs. I'm just stuck in water. Crocs don't fail me now. This is where I would stay the night if I was stranded here. What's up, fish keepers? It's your boy, Bigfoot. And I'm here walking through the woods on my favorite nature trail. I want to talk about local nano fish, the trail itself, this environment that motivates me, and maybe even talk about more fish, this time not nano. We are at the UWF Nature Trail. It's spring, March the 9th, and all the green is finally coming out. We've had some heavy raining, and I think that's just the best time to come out here. I say after a range, it's a great time to come out here because no one seems to want to. I think that's changed a little bit. Some dude ran out into the woods right over there with his dog. I didn't even know there's a trail over there. But yeah, more or less, this is my biome. This is what I'm looking at all the time, which coerces me to build more fish tanks. I was born in the swamp, molded by it. I didn't see 35% humidity until I was already a man. Nothing puts me in a, a strange mood quite as much as when it's winter time and all of this is brown and cold and quiet. It's quiet right now, but I can still hear the rustlings of little creatures out there. I am shooting this on my iPhone. I've yet to get the gumption to film with the full video set. You know, I moved here when I was seven and it was a culture shock. There's these fan palms and they instantly look like dinosaur plants to me. Where's here? Well, Pensacola, Florida, of course. Florida, but in the armpit of Alabama. I didn't know when I got here, but the diversity of freshwater fish is actually higher than most in this area. There's a triangle of fish missions laid before my feet. Harsh temperatures and high humidity. It's the downside, but it seems like I will be able to catch these fish in the wild with just a simple trip. This area to me is known as the Gulf Coast. I think Texas stole that name from us. We stole that name from Texas. This area is also known as the Emerald Coast, which sounds so boring. It's like a marble counter at a bank or a law firm. All right. We go to Fishes in the Fresh Waters of Florida Gallery, the state-ran website. We can set the correct region, and they list Scambia River and Blackwater River. So we're right here, right at this trail, and you can see this is not a Scambia River, but this is a Scambia River. We are as good as right on top of a Scambia River. These are all the fish do all habitats, flowing freshwater and still freshwater. And it's not a bad group. Already own those guys, the Eastern mosquito fish. A lot of things to aspire to, including this Southern Brook lamprey that could be attached to your backside. Half leech, half fish, all nightmare. Look at those gills. Are those eyeballs? No, they're gills or stomachs. I don't know. I imagine if I fell in the water and came out, this would be attached to me somehow. The hog choker. I don't know what it did turn that name. Sounds like it involved a hog. And look at that, plenty of darters. Then you've got one of the larger food fish. Tons of shiners. You know, it's either a darter, a shiner, some kind of sunfish. I would like to eventually catch these in the wild. I feel like that would put meaning behind the trip. I would remember the trip more so than the online purchase. But locally, this is what catches my eyes, this blue nose shiner. I don't know. It looks like that. That's obviously a male. And I swear these shiners, they've all got that look to them. See the Eastern mosquito fish? I have those. And this is a, a rare variant. So I'm wondering if that's the same thing with the blue nose. And of course you look at these things and that's like the best possible light. Whereas this is probably a more realistic picture of them. Killa fish looks cool. They really do try to put these guys in the best lighting. Are these just paintings? No, gave them all their vitamins to show that color. This area has grown in population, but not as much as other areas due to this whole weather thing. And it's good to know that my ancestors have endured this humidity for around 400 years. The panhandle of Florida is a swamp, and Florida has tried to sell that swamp to Alabama over and over again until they could build a road through it. It's so humid, I don't wear lotion. That's for the fish, but it's also because I already have frog skin. I know this because I went to Las Vegas a few times. I almost got swept up by that dry air. The pillows would sting my face. The towels would peel off my eyebrows. They've really dolled it up a little bit too much in my opinion. These things, unforgivable. Used to be a tiny little web page where you could find this map. And now it's just applicable for everyone. This used to be the advanced part of the trail. First timers stay here. And now it seems like with the help of the map, I can no longer gatekeep. If you come here and fall, not only are the horse flies gonna 
bite you up. There's always college students hitting the goofy grass out here on the trail. And when they first get to this school, they think it's a very isolated trail. It's very quiet out here. And they will be right there on the Bellard Walk. I feel like I disturbed some kind of ritual. All right, so if you followed along, came up here, around here, some kid was sitting there. So we got on the trail up here. And now we're here. Where we're trying to get to is the blood pole. Interesting. Just kidding. I think I'm going to come up here, up here, and around. I would be home before dark. Bikers trip me out on this trail. You'd be out here with your kids, and they're like, excuse me. And they, like, don't get off their bike. They try to zip right past. Let me tell you something. This is a walking trail just as much as the biking trail. My memory serves me right. Bikers yield to walkers. Walkers yield to horse riders. So that's the drama on the trail. People also like to bring their big dogs out here off leash. They've really babied this up. They hold your hand every step of the way. Darn. And the valley's pretty cool. I think we're going to go further out here instead of going up. Go here. Go up. It's been a while since I've been on this trail. Not to sound like a geezer, but over the last 10 years, it kind of feels like it's changed a little bit. I mean, what changes about this, right? But, you know, time time's a weird thing. Aging is a weird thing. Oh, kitty. I guess if I were ever to gripe, gripe about these. The bikers. I guess I'm willing to go further. These maps serve one purpose for y'all to follow along at home. Kind of want to go up here and then cut through the port corridor. You probably have to get off and come back down. What time is it? Perfect day though. No sunscreen needed. Off we go. Keep encountering people that are like out here working out and stuff. This is what I look like. Imagine seeing this on the trail. Now we're in biker territory. When I say biker, I mean bicycle. We're going deep, deep in the woods. Look, we found someone's bed. There we go, dinosaur plant. How much that, that's like as normal as apple pie to me now. But when I first came here, this fan palm freaked me out. I thought I was in Jurassic Park. I was seven years old and never looked back. We lived next to a freshwater pond. And I was fascinated with everything that lived in that pond. This is actually where uh, Jeepers Creepers lives. Oh! Dude, don't even think about it. Okay, you know the part in scary movies where somebody does something really stupid and everybody hates them for it? This is it. So, uh, come by here at night. Give that three knocks, run for your life. Sometimes I don't even think it's a path I'm following. It's just a corroded waterway. Okay, I slipped. Crocs don't fail me now. I'm in my best Sunday attire. Oh no, okay. There's holes in the Crocs. I just stepped in water. It's gonna be a very fun walk home. Gonna start breathing heavy. Oh, we got traps. I ain't the only smart guy. This is where I would stay the night if I was stranded here. That little cubby. Probably a badger's home. Now it's mine. Not quite the opening I was expecting. Another house. <sighs> Jesus Christ. All right. You know, I came out here and I realized the power plant's right there. I am not trying to walk by the power plant. So this way we go. I can hear it humming, which is why I looked on the map. I'm like, oh yeah. It certainly does bring us right by where Homer Simpson works. It's getting brighter. I don't get the opportunity to walk. I'll try to come out here more, but you know, the bugs are away. At the beginning of March, we've got no bugs. We've got 70 degree weather. The sun is gone right now. I get to scurry under the clouds. When I come home on an airplane, I know I'm home because I look at the ground and it's sandy. You'll be flying over Georgia or Texas and it'll be red. When you fly over Florida, it's more of a white sand. On second thought, I think we have a rhombus of adventures that we need to go on. My current fish projects are rainbow shiners in Alabama. These things at one point were as close as mobile, not mobile. We've got Halloween darters, all kinds of darters in North Georgia. Central Florida has the Okie Finoki pygmy sunfish, not to be outdone by the Gulf Coast pygmy sunfish. You'll see all these very cool photos online of these North American native nano fish. And it's really a case where I think they all probably look silver. If they're hit with the light just right, it creates this pattern. Maybe not dissimilar to a stack inler that looks really cool in the professional photos, but when you get it, you realize, oh, it's just at a certain angle. Of course, you get to South Florida and you get to enjoy all of the non-native species that come around as well. Not only everything that's happening native in the Everglades, but I'm talking platys, plecos, goldfish, meatfish, you fish. If you're quick enough, you could get yourself a free ball python as a pet. You know what the real kicker here is? They, they never have a winter. That's too bad. But then their summers are just as hot as us. You would think that their summers were hotter than Pensacola. No, it's the same temperature. Somehow there's a heat vortex that just sits right on top of us and it'll actually be cooler in South Florida in the middle of the summer. 
I shouldn't complain about winter openly. We did get six inches of snow last winter. It was like my sixth time ever seeing snow in my life and it was a good amount. And I was pretty annoyed by the third day and by the fourth day it was gone. I would have been a little more charmed if it happened in or around Christmas. No, this was like January 24th surprise. I wasn't prepared to come out here and name plants or find fish. This was just a uh, walk in the park. I have to look up the rules. I'm not sure if you can start grabbing pieces of nature out here, putting them in your fish tank. It's one of those things where it's like, it shouldn't be a problem. I feel so guilty doing it. If everyone did it, there'd be rules on it since only a few people do it not a big deal. I mean, you don't need to put that many rules on nature per se, but if everyone was a fish keeper and learned to collect their decor outside, all the decor sitting outside would be snagged up. Anything around civilization would be very annoying. It's a wild world. I don't know how that would exist. I mean, I want to dive in someone's garden and grab their rocks, but maybe normal people don't want to do that. There's that red. There's that red clay. Looks like home, don't it? You gotta watch where you step for snakes. Came from up there. That dumb cell. River, I believe. It's like 68 degrees right now. You don't get this often. Everything you see can go from freezing to 110. Which is why they're so scraggly. It certainly isn't like a snow white forest, you know? But you got cotton mouths, copper heads, and rattlesnakes. Watch where you step. They don't want to get stepped on as much as you don't want to step on them. They will curl up. They're quiet. They blend in. Your brain always registers as something weird. It's like glancing at that pine cone real quick. You look away, you look back, and it's a snake people that way so back to the power poles strange feeling out here it's very close to roads nestled in between neighborhoods not tons of people come out here but to all the freshmen if you come out here to smoke that you're gonna get caught you're not gonna get caught you're gonna have visitors you get to say hello to those visitors blazed in nature that's fine not a big deal it's just i feel bad catching them and sending one into a coughing fit oh, there it is smokestack this is kind of long and boring. I like to think this is what an apocalypse would look like for me one day. Just like tiny, tiny little signs. If humans were here, somehow I'd be out in the outskirts where I thought I was alone. And the days would be filled with long, boring parts like this. Now, small clues, big clues that utility vehicles come through here. Where's Carl? Look at where my tax dollars are going. Why won't they fix these potholes? There's another. Shameless. There's another. What the paper plate says goes. Just what I wanted more power lines. I'm gonna trek back. This is the way home. Okay, interesting. Are those croaks? They're just crickets. Those are frogs. I think there's water down here. Let's see what's down here first. I'll tell you what, there's nothing that suits my brain more than that big old tangled mess of vines. I guess I could live out here. I guess there's like areas where you can live remotely. I feel like I've always kind of been tied down to the economics of the area though. The further away you get from town, the further away you get. Listen, uh, remember you were little, you know you could get in close when they went quiet. Not water, it just, it was just wet. Well, anyways, back in my day, that's all we had. Paint on the trees. You'd be out here in this gorge, thinking about, with your children lined up on the trees. In small, miss small. To the right! I do think about this gorge a lot. There's a lot of flat land here. It's the flattest land that ever did flat, maybe comparable to LA, but even California has mountains. Florida's just flat. So that is very impressive to me. Also carved out by water. When I hear kids out here, it's like Hansel and Gretel. There's a witch in the woods somewhere. All right, crossroads, straight we go. I felt better using paint on the trees than using the sign, but I guess it's convenient. There's maps everywhere. You used to not get cell phone reception out here. You pull it all up on Google Maps. The trails are marked up. All right. I knew that was gonna happen. Talking all that crap, and I should have turned left at that crossroads, so going back now. And the map saved me. Go figure. Saved me 20 minutes, but it's not that much dark. I'm not gonna be shivering out here at nighttime. <laughs> there she blows. All right. Used to come out to creeks and ponds. We throw bread in the water. Have a little, a little kid net waiting for those fish. And to me, they were minnows. Looking back on it, I think they were just baby bass and baby brim. They'd have these little blue glittery scales. I'd be nine years old. That was a year before I got my first fish tank. Didn't even realize I could keep them. Always just put them back. Just go out there at 12 or 13 and fish by myself. We are back. So is whatever that is. Learn how to catch a little brim with bread. Catch a big bass with the brim. By times he'd spit the brim up. You let the brim go with the bass. Birds are starting to quiet down a little bit. Just hear that low hum of crickets. Probably just hear me breathing. There's a buffalo stampede down this trail. These are the roots I would jump behind. That was muddy. It was real muddy. Let's look 
looking good. Cloudy water from the mud getting stirred up. If you want to find animals, you got to go real slow. You always hear the squirrels, but everything else will be dead quiet and still. Some sweet trash. I was trekking through here during the winter one time and I actually came across an otter and it was very odd because it was seemed very cold. Maybe the guy had lots of blubber built up. I also saw a coral snake. It's that snake that makes you do the rhyme Jack versus black. You're okay and yellow touches fellow. You're pretty dead. So I panicked and couldn't remember the rhyme. My third amazing animal find was a little alligator sitting on this bank. And it might not seem like a big deal, but I just came out here by myself. I looked there, he looked at me. He was trying to be quiet. He's probably thinking I didn't see him. It's just so close to campus. You wouldn't think it's gator time out here, but it's gator time. All right, what was that? They're waking up now. It's starting to sprinkle. I need to get back with my camera out. Came out on the other side. And there you have it. The walk on the UWF nature trail. Hope you found it as enlightening as I did. Ooh, look, free aquarium rocks. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Free wood. Until next time, fish keepers. Until next time. Where'd you get those creepers? Creepers, creepers. Where'd you get those eyes? Please join us. Please join us. Please join us. Join us.